In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 That rock that never fails. Let me hide in you. Let me, let me hide in you. Let me. Thank you because you are faithful. We give you all glory, Lord. We worship your majesty for your love and affection, for your goodness and mercy. We thank you, Jesus, for another wonderful day in your presence, Lord. We thank you for you are here, God. Jesus is here. And the Holy Spirit is here, Father. We give you all glory, Father. Because where two or three shall gather in your name, you will be there in their midst, Father. We are gathered here in your name, Father. And we know that you are here with us, Holy Spirit. We pray for wisdom. We pray for knowledge. We pray for understanding. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, give us a heart of flesh today. And get out of our mind and spirit and soul every heart of stone. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, give us a heart to, to, to comprehend your word, Father. Lord Jesus, and give us ability to retain your word today and for our daily use in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Through your word today, set us free in the name of Jesus. Through your word today, expose the secret of darkness in our lives and let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name.
mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. Let's be seated. Who can remind us where we stopped last week? We are still on the study of fornication and adultery. Where did we stop last week? Anybody? We started from fornication last week. We discussed and we were just on, we were treating one by one some important things and I don't want to say it ahead of you. Where did we stop last week? Thank you. God bless you. Huh? We were treating one by one how to get out of fornication. And what number did we stop? Four. Number four. Yes. And what did I say number four was? No, that was number four. Daddy. Oh yes, I have two number fours here. Renounce all your partners in sin. Um, can anybody explain that to us if you were here last? How do you renounce your friends in sin? Your, the friends that you commit sin together, how do you renounce them? Yes? Yes? Anybody? The adults are, you are just thinking now? Yes? Hallelujah. By not doing what they are doing. Praise the Lord. By not doing what they are doing. This time you have a friend. Yeah. They like to go to party. Mm. You, you, you don't go with them. You let them know that you are a child of God. That you don't go to parties anymore. Amen. You have a friend that smoke, that drink. You let them know that you are a child of God. You are a new creature. Amen. You don't go to those anymore. Amen. So I'll move on quickly. Isaiah 52 verse 11 said, Depart, depart, go out from there. Touch no unclean things. Go out from the midst of her. Be clean. You will be the vessel of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Before I continue, I just want to pass the message. You know, it's very good when, we have, when, we, when God sent us something, we have to just deliver. And we cannot not even know whether... It, because I, I, initially I wanted to look at the faces to say people are not here on the Bible study. I mean on, the, on this Bible study together I should wait until Sunday. But I believe that, you know, it is in the Bible study you see most serious people in the church. Because not everybody you see in the church on Sunday is actually a, the member. But the people that you see during the weekdays activities, during the, the weekly activities. So the Lord wants us to be very careful of the activity of the Queen of the Coast. This is the second time there was a warning last year before Christmas. And this warning again was even directly to me now. Directly to me yesterday stroke today. We need to be very careful. And it was the old man. I know the way God come to me. Jesus used to come, but when he comes as a old man, he comes himself. So the old man came last night stroke today. And it took me to a, a farmland. So, and it, 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 it make a kind of proverb to me. You know, when you make an adage, and you you now read like a redo, and you now tell the meaning. And in the farmland, it showed me two workmen, laborers. 
and he showed me and two of the laborers they are very hefty and strong they are very strong men with muscular men and he gave each of them job to do and he gave each of them two fields and he called me and said my son come watch two of them then I was watching I didn't know what he wanted to say from them I was just watching and he stood and the two of them started cultivating the land the cultivating the land planting yam at the same time cultivating and planting yam at the same time cultivating and climb and climbing I mean and planting yam and all of a sudden the one that was very strong the one that was there was one that was stronger there he was very fast he, he, he believed in his he believed in his own strength he believed in his strong might he was very strong and and the other one was believing in god although the one that started with strength and believing in himself he was faster he was faster and he was just you know he was just cultivating land and very fast and very fast and very fast and the other one was slow and believing God, was slow and believing God, and was slow and doing things normally and very neatly. But the one that was just doing everything anyhow and was just going very fast, it was very fast. And it was in the front. And the old man took me to the second side, to, to the back of them, the two of them. He said, now watch them from here. Then I said, what do you want to bring out of this now? I don't understand. He said, just watch. So the one that was in the front that was very fast, as he just lifted his eyes, then there was a woman. I just saw a woman. He said, look at that woman. I saw a woman from here to here is a is woman being, and the rest is fish. He said, that is the queen of the coast. Look at what she's going to do. And when that strong man just looked up, he said, he called the man by his name. He know, she knows the man's name. She just called the man's name. I, I forgot the name. She called the man and the man looked up. He said, come here. And the man walked to the queen of the coast. And the queen of the coast took the man by the hand and initiated him. And took him underneath the water. And the old man, to show me, he showed me what was happening underneath the water. But I don't want to go into all that details. But what I'm saying is that the interpretation of it all, because after all things done and uh, seen and done, the, the old man wanted me to know that in ministry, in, in the gospel in this kingdom, whatever I call you to do, whatever I call you to do, never rely on the harm of flesh. He called, he called many ministers, he called many men of God, he said many of them are already dancing underneath with this marine kingdom, under there. Their calling is under the, under the under the marine kingdom there in the with the queen of the coast many calling of many men and that is why they mislead many believers a lot of people a lot of them even think they are still with god they still think they are still doing this way they still think they are preaching but the only way you will know is that their preaching does not go does not go hand in hand with the dressing of their members when you see them, they preach wonderfully. They will talk about heaven. They will talk about everything. But when you look at their members, the life of their member does not correspond with what they preach. Those are the way to, re to recognize those people that the calling has been hijacked by the queen of the coast. And the woman is still continuing to do that. Because devil, as many agents of the devil have failed, they failed devil. And therefore, he believed that the person to use now in this generation is the queen of the coast and is a and her agent. And part of it is the dressing issue. Part of just to make a lot of people, a lot of men fall, no matter how so, because they know men are serious. So they want to make as many men as possible fall through the sins of the heart. And the reason why I'm saying this is because it relates to what we are teaching about. He wants to destroy many ladies and many women and to make them careless about dressing, to even go to, to get stubborn when you correct them. Say, this is not good. Don't do like this. You are too transparent. Say, ah, what is so bad? What, what did I do? This cat is not so, it's not too, you know, all those kind of things. And because they are, the purpose is to destroy the church. And also, he, 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 she has stolen many calling. I jack many calling. And he, she has sent even many of her ladies to befall many men of God. And to hijack their calling and purpose. 
and it's only those who rely on their hand of flesh or their intelligence or the kind of school they went to or the bible bible college they went they have those grammar and those those bible college stuff in their head those are the people that are easily befallen but when you rely on the lord that called you you rely on the lord that sent you he said you'll be able to do exploit and you go extra mile you'll be able to do exploits and you go extra mile so there's warning this warning i will still be sending whenever we have program or anywhere i'll be able to preach men of god need to be careful the every worker in divine yard they need to be careful because the devil has sent has given the queen of the coast the assignment now many of his agents they are failed witches are failed they arrest many witches in church programs familiar spirit they are arrested hijacked in the church programs therefore this woman is very smooth and very 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 intelligent and very powerful Our activity including dressings activity including seduction activity activity including uh, uh, you know any kind of thing, deception civilization civilization will begin to go into churches it is the work of this woman people will be, you know men of god are getting civilized now before they used to be very serious now civilization has come and they will begin to change Jesus, their Jesus will begin to change. Their Lord will begin to change. That is why you see many churches, you see wonderful men of God, you see miracles and signs, and you see their members woefully dressed, woefully believing and twisting the gospel of Christ. We need to be careful wherever we go. Watch out for the end time deception of the queen of the coast. She is the, she's the one in, that is changing larger aspect of the ruling of the kingdom of darkness now. A half a word is enough for the wise. Be careful and pray seriously. Pray seriously against the activities of the queen of the coast in our end time. I continue quickly. Number four, you must be very vigilant. You must be a very vigilant Christian to avoid any sin of fornication. Be very vigilant. You, know, you must be watchful and very vigilant now that you are a new person that wants to be completely free from sexual immoralities by being carefully by being careful whenever you are you are alone especially with any opposite person a man or woman a boy or girl when you are alone with any opposite person you need to be very careful Stop all late night visit to your fiancés and your fiance for the people that are in courtship. Stop every late night visit, dangerous visitation for your fiancé and fiance and the friends of opposite sex. You must stop every dangerous visit and any occasion where you'll be left alone with that person in the room. Amen. Amen. Stop taking chances. Stop saying that I know myself. I can handle it. I know what I can do. There's nothing, nothing can happen. We should stop taking chances. Anything can happen. Amen. You must, you must foresee evil coming before it gets to you. Every individual knows his or her weaknesses. As women, as men, you know your weak points. And you must see the evil before they get to you. Foresee evil before any evil thing gets to you. Before you even think, imagine that if I do this, this can happen, this can happen, that can happen. And you stop it before it gets to you. Amen. You know, fornication doesn't just happen. It happens from the thought. From the thought to the mind. The mind will develop it and before the action, it takes a long distance. You know, people that just confess for the case, they say, ah, it just happened. It, does, it doesn't just happen. It takes process. And therefore, we need to stop it at every single process. Amen. Amen. Therefore, you must flee all situations that will catch up with your weaknesses. See sexual immorality as poison and flee all its appearances. Avoid any man or woman who you think might have your interest in mind. You see, when you know any man or woman that have your interest in mind, or when you are not comfortable with a man or woman, you need to avoid those kind of person. Amen. Until you are able to build your, your inner man. 
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Do not hesitate to shout for help if anyone wants to lure you into, into this act of immorality. To the glory of God, I escaped many sexual traps as a young believer when I was young. I am only teaching you from my experiences. So, as a child of God, you need to be very careful so that you can escape any kind of trap set by the enemy to befall you. Because one of the, one of the assignments of the Queen of the Coast is to befall as many young Christians as possible and as many young... Uh, I'm not talking about only men Christians. I'm talking about men and women to seduce them, to befall them, and therefore to destroy their spiritual fences. Amen. Amen. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 22. It says, Flee also your youthful lusts, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of pure heart. Amen. We should flee every for act of fornication and sin. And we must be able to call the Lord from the heart, our heart of pure heart. We don't call God from a polluted heart, a heart of fornication, a heart of filthiness. Amen. If, if Christ opened our heart as you are sitting down here today, since morning that we have, or since last Sunday that we have been going around, can Christ find our heart be pure? Is our heart pure or our heart is polluted? It is not only this act we are talking about. We are talking also about the pollution of your heart. Your heart must be pure. Your heart must not be contaminated or polluted by the enemy. Amen. Amen. Next one, number five. Choosing new godly Bible-believing friends. You must be able to select for yourself godly Bible-believing friends. Choosing these friends will also help you step out of these sexual sins. The kind of friend you keep may influence you sometimes against your wish. Unbelieving friends might engage you with filthy words and sometimes mock your abstinence from sexual immoralities. You know, as a young people, the, the friends you keep, they begin to mock you, say, ah, at your age, you don't have a girlfriend or a boyfriend. Are you listening to me, young people? They will begin to mock you, say, at your age. You don't have this thing. You don't have the boyfriend. Me, I have two. Me, they will be, I used to hear that in school a lot when I was in school many years ago. You know, this is the activities of the devil. It is to corrupt your morality, just to corrupt your, to make you behave like them. And even those people, they are not the ones that, that are saying these things. It's the devil that are using them to take you along with them in their own camp so that you can become corrupt and you can behave like them and you make your you you become the enemy of god just like they are those are the activity of them we have to watch out for them don't let anybody don't even hang around any friend that is that is talking like some friends say ah you you don't even know how to smoke cigarette you, you don't even have any problem. those kind of those kinds of people they are not friends as a child of god that want to do the will of god and want to make heaven you must not stand around any child of anybody that, that talks like that they are not your kind of people they are not going the same way with you they are not in the bus that you are on they are on another different bus and therefore everything that you hold them is just good morning good afternoon good evening how are you bye bye amen, amen. some could even ask why you do not have any boyfriends and girlfriends at a certain age. They may even look down on you and tell you that you are not in their levels and uncivilized. Amen. Amen. I will tell you a story of myself when I was still young. I told you that throughout school, everything, I, don't, I never met any woman. I didn't know any woman. So there was this lady that the, the mother traveled out of the country. And she asked me to, to stay in the in the in, you know in the same in one apartment with this lady because she was young, younger than myself and she was alone and because she was traveling out of the country. So I, I decided to stay in the house because I had it was a three bedroom apartment. So I was I was in one room, she was in another room. So and I knew all those I knew all those tricks. I was a young believer. Any late night movies I would not watch it. She will be in the city room watching her movies. I will be, I will just be in the room. She will say, ah, you know, you know when somebody is trying to laugh at something, trying to look for somebody else to come and laugh with her. That one didn't work on me. 
She tried everything, dresses or seductive dresses, scanty dresses, nothing worked for me. There was a day said, today is today. This, this boy, he, she, he thinks he's very stubborn. So, all of a sudden, in the middle of the night, she had gone to bed, I have gone to bed myself. I just had, ah! I said, my God, what is that? I opened my door. What is it? He said, yeah, something. I said, what is it? He said, you didn't hear the word? I said, I didn't hear anything. What is it? Because she, I noticed that she tried to open my door. I locked the door behind. I didn't just, just close the door. I locked it behind. Because I knew I, I was sleeping with the devil inside. So I locked the door behind. She must have tried the handle of the door. It didn't open. And she now screamed. Then I quickly opened the door. What is the problem? We look around. We, look, we, we went to kitchen, city room. We, we didn't see anything. And she said she had to pass the night in my home. She was, I said, no, we both will sit down in the sitting room here. And whatever, whatever it is, you come and meet us in the sitting room. You cannot come to my room to sleep. And I cannot go to your room. We have to sit down in the sitting room. So immediately I saw the face. The face just squeezed. You know when somebody is hungry, say, this one, too. This, this, what kind of woman? You know, that thing, I don't, I don't want to go to details. The thing passed. And one day, we are forgotten about the story. And we were just sitting down, we were talking. You know what this lady said? He said, you yourself, I know this, this man is impotent. That's what she said. And I was just smiling. I said, you just wait until I'm married. That one will be cleared, whether I'm impotent or not. But for now, the padlock is on my body. So you need to be very careful. Many, do you know how many boys, young boys and girls are falling in those areas? If I begin to tell you all the demonic trap, I will tell you a different story. I faced them a lot when I was young. There was another married woman. The husband was living in America. And she was, she was not always around. She was working outside the state too, outside the, the state of that place. And she has she needed somebody to be staying in the house so that the house will not be it was a bungalow. The house will not be empty. So I was asked to stay in the in the house because I was preparing for my final exam and I was thinking that it would be a best place for me to read alone. So I didn't know that the woman used to come once in a while for weekend. I was just thinking I was alone in the house and because she had a spare key. So one day I just felt somebody in there. I said, ah. So later I was just saying, hello, are you? So, because the person that asked me to come there was not the real owner of the house. So I said, she knows about me already. She said, are you so, so first? I said, yes. Oh, they told me that you'll be staying in the house with, for me. I said, yes, it's me. So she greeted me very well and everything. She even made the food in the kitchen and called me to eat. And we became friends and I had my room there. So she would travel, she would come back some weekends, some weekends she would not come. So a lot of things happened. One day I was just in my room, reading as usual, and this woman, I'm telling you somebody that it was even, at that time it was close to double my age, and the woman wanted to force on herself, I'm coming to my, my room, I don't want to go into details because of the young people here, but God created a way out of that place too. And I move out of the house quickly, speedily. And everybody, the woman that asked me to stay in the house asked her, why did this boy rush out of your house? She couldn't answer the, the question. And I didn't tell the woman, the other woman too, why I left the house. They asked me, everybody asked me, why did you live there? Because I didn't want to put her to shame. But I knew why I left the place. Everybody asked me, I said, no problem. I just, I just didn't want to stay there anymore. He said, but if you don't want to, you don't have to rush out of the house. And the, it was a elderly woman that asked me to stay in that house. And later on, the elderly woman told me, said, I know why you left the place. You just don't want to talk. I said, why? He said, I know. Don't worry. It's okay. And the woman just forgot about it. But the old woman knew why I left the house. But I didn't tell anybody. So, as a young people, you don't take something as opportunity. Because anything you look at opportunity can destroy your life for life. Those are the things that we, we took as opportunity are the ones that we are battling with now. Those things that you took as chances, as enjoyment. You would do it with five minutes, ten minutes. Even if you are Methuselah, you will spend one hour. And you are gone. And the trouble will torment that life forever. We need to be very careful. I used to admire the lives of the young ones that, that received this teaching. 
this topic that I'm teaching us, I sent it to a brother. The brother called me yesterday. She said, I mean, he said, please, I, I, I'm having some attacks in my dream. A, 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 he got born again in 2010 or 11. And up to now, I don't know where he is now, but he was, when we led, led he was here, we pre, we, I preached to him here, and he, he knelt down here, I led him to Christ, and he went back to his church. He attended another, I don't want to mention him, I told him to go to his church, that was about a year or two ago. He went back to his church, but he was always calling me, recognizing that I was the one that led him to Christ. But I was, I would talk to him on the phone, sometimes I would send him messages to, you know, to encourage him, to, to let him grow. But today he's grown. So yesterday he called me. He said, I have a problem. I said, what is it? He said, I live a life completely like a child of God. I don't have any sin that I know. But I still keep on having attacks in my dream. In fact, he said, the one of yesterday, they pressed me down. I couldn't breathe. I was, it was terrible. It was dangerous. You know when somebody was sleeping? They, they would, somebody, it would be like somebody else slept on the person. You know, put the whole weight on you. You won't be able to shake or anything. That's what he explained to me. I said, as a child of God, you shouldn't, you shouldn't have that kind of attack. You shouldn't have that kind of attack. He said, yeah, that's why I call you, sir. What can I do? Because I have done everything. You, you always told me not to commit sin. You only told me to do anything. I said, if there is nothing, that thing will not happen. But I will help you to discover what happened. I will send you send me your email, I will send some information to you, you read it, and you pray the prayer, and you come back to me. So, this topic, fornication and adultery, in this act, you will see some of the ones, we will come back to, we will get to some, some act that we have done in the past, that can still be causing trouble now. So, he read everything today. This, before, we, before I came here, and this afternoon, I, I, didn't, I didn't look at the time. He sent me a text message, he said, wow, wow, this is wonderful. This should be a best-selling book in the whole world. If you say you only remove small parts and say to me, how will the rest be? That's what he said. This small part that I read has done immediate miracle for me. And he, still, he said, I'm still praying the other prayers. This is wonderful. He sent the test two times, almost immediately. So that is what I'm saying. There are some things you took advantage of when you were young and said, ah, this opportunity. And it became trouble later. Amen. Amen. Proverbs 27, verse 17. Hion sharpens Hion. So a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. Which means every friend we must have must be a friend that can help our spiritual life. Amen. Amen. So many ways, many things we have done when we were ignorant, when we were young, a lot of things. A lot of things. If I begin to, as a young boy, if I begin to tell you what I passed through, you will know that, a, and those people, those, those older people, they suffer throughout their lives. And some of them died in the suffering. They didn't know what they did wrong. Because when you, when, when you begin to use, like some older women, they molest children. Younger children, younger, younger boys, they use them to, to, to feel their own pleasure. Because they didn't have a grown-up man. Many things like that happen. And those women struggle through life. And they begin to live holy. They begin to live righteous. They begin to have the same problem. They go to several deliverers. They can't see any difference. But they don't know they did something when they were younger. And the cause of that thing has been placed upon their destiny. And whatever they So this, I want, this teaching will set liberate a lot of people. Because of this, especially this book of Ultimate Deliverance, if I face a lot of attacks, up to now that I'm talking to you, it has even not, it not be even be reviewed, talk less or produced. Because the devil knows that this, this thing, and that was, the, that was one of the many people that said, this, where did you get this from? That is one of the many people that God has used me to send those things to. This is what I sent. I sent part of this to Believe, Believe TV. Two times they sent email to me. You need to come and teach this on our TV. The first time I didn't, re I didn't reply. The second time they sent me an email again. You need to come and teach this on our TV. I said, I'm sorry. God didn't ask me to go to any TV now. 
I'm just starting a small ministry. When God says that, I will let you know. So God has, at least, I have to use it for my own people first. Praise the Lord. Number six, please do, do not hesitate to speak to your pastor or your parents. Young ones, are you listening to me? Speak to your pastor or your parents if you think you, you need help. You know, when you think that you are going through some habits, some character, some things that you need help, don't hesitate to speak to somebody. I love one brother. He called me almost a week ago or so. He just called me and said, Pastor, from Dublin. He said, Oh, I don't even know. These days, I cannot even read Bible anymore. When I read one page, I'm sleeping. When I even want to pray, I, I just begin to give up. In fact, I can need that to pray, I will just sleep off. And this thing has started for some time now. What can I do? I need help. Those are the kind of things I'm talking about. When you feel any problem in your spirituality, you need to seek help quickly for somebody to help you. That's why we have ourselves. Amen. That's why the Bible says, Iron sharpened iron. Proverbs 27, 17. I read on. Some cases could be stronger, especially when you think yours is like addiction. Please, don't be ashamed to seek help. This is a sin that is capable of stealing your joy, kill your future, and send you to hellfire. You need to seek whatever help you can, you can get to gain freedom from this killer disease, I mean killer sin. Please make up your mind to start this process today. Tomorrow might be too late. Many have been captured by this act of sexual immorality and have paid with their lives dearly through various sexual transmitted diseases and the current fearful disease called HIV. Those people did not have this opportunity that has been presented to you today. Fornication makes people marry wrongly. Are you listening to that? Fornication will make people marry wrongly. And I will tell you a story. This story is a very funny one. I had a cousin. This is my cousin. In fact, this my wife, my wife knows about the story. That's why she's laughing already. This cousin will go for anything in skate. In fact, it was addiction. He will be at work. A young man. That time he was doing that way of the same age. About, I'm talking about 18, 19, 20 years ago. This man will leave. He will be at work because he just tossed a lady and something worked together. He will just leave the work because he's the owner of the shop. He will just tell somebody, please, stay here for me. And he has gone home. Somebody, maybe he didn't even know the lady from anywhere. He would just take to lunch, and from lunch they will head up at home. And to, to know that some ladies are so cheap, you don't know somebody, you just took it to lunch. From there you just go to bed. Look at that kind of life. Children, you should never sell yourself as you are growing. Never. Never. And this boy was doing that. He was doing that. Different kind of woman in fornication. But one day, he met one lady. If you see the lady, eh, very beautiful. You know what I mean by very beautiful? I'm not, I mean the opposite of beautiful. <laughs> ah, very beautiful lady. Very yellow. <laughs> In fact, immediately, I was, I was around that time in Lagos. I used to be off and on in Lagos. And he was running around. I said, what is the problem? He came to his brother's place because I was in the brother's place. He came there and said, he cannot go home. I said, but you have your house. What is the problem? He said, there are soldiers there. I said, what do you do with soldiers? He said, he's left there. <laughs> he, he had an affair with a lady and the, 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 the guardian of the lady had to be someone that is successful, you know, had connections. And that took, the lady was pregnant. And therefore they had to take a soldier to follow the lady to the house of the person that was responsible. <clears throat> and when we, when we intervened, the woman said, I don't have any problem. The soldier, they are not meant to beat you. All we want, we have brought the lady's things. You are married. That's your wife. Because she's pregnant. The boy cried, I cannot marry this one. I cannot marry this one. I cannot marry this kind of lady. Am I blind? Am I crazy? They said, You don't know anything. You are married. That's your wife. He cried. He got angry. He got angry. 
Nobody talk. The, the lady just sit down there. They put the lady inside the house. Put her things inside. And I ask her, I say, what did you find this guy? You that you are very good, good looking like this. You you know, you wish to have many. If you see some of his real girlfriends, they are very pretty people. And how did you get to this kind of thing? He said, I don't even know what came to me. He was just, you know, I was just checking that day and I saw one house girl. You know, I thought it was house girl. I, <laughs> I said, oh, it's okay. Maybe that's what God is saying. He said, don't say that though. When we go, we say, I should marry that girl. I said, but they say you have to marry the girl. What can we do? Are you going to run away from your business and your house forever? Ah, he thought it was a joke. But those people, I'm telling you up to now, the lady has given him about five or six children and they are grown up now. The children may be in the secondary school or university now, as I'm talking to you. He married that lady. In fact, after marrying the lady, he got born again. After marrying the lady, he calmed down. He looked at his life, what fornication had caused him. He, before he got born again, he would not be able to introduce the lady to anybody, any of his friends. He would be ashamed to say, this is my wife. Sometimes he, he, he tortured, and they came to warn him because if you torture this lady, if she reports you again, ah, you will find yourself in Kirikiri or some other place. He says, hey, what kind of problem? He, she, he married the lady by force. Up to now, they are still together. Their children are big now. So that is what fornication can. Fornication makes people marry wrongly. You marry out of your plan, out of your, you know, it just happened. You just find yourself in that marriage. That is what fornication can do. Out of plan, out of purpose. You know, somebody that does not fit the purpose of God for your life. Imagine a child of God marry unbeliever, chronic unbeliever, a born again sister. Is that not fornication? Many of them are like that, born again. I'm not even talking about when the two of you are sinners. Some sisters are born again, but they found themselves married unbeliever because of fornication. May God have mercy on us in Jesus' name. Amen. This is, this is a sin that is capable of stealing your joy, kill your future, and send you to hellfire. You need to seek whatever help you can get to gain freedom from this killer sin. Please make up your mind to start this new process today. Tomorrow might be too late. Those who did not have this opportunity that is being presented to you today. There are a lot of people that did not have this opportunity. Fornication makes people marry wrongly. We have talked about that. They destroy your purpose of God for your life. I was telling some people about a few days ago. When a man, listen to me, when you have the purpose of God on your life, even when you are not born again, because from the day you were born, God has a plan for your life. From the day your mother conceived you. Even when you were still in sin, as I'm talking now, there are many great evangelists still on the street drinking beer. Many mighty evangelists of tomorrow, they are still drinking beer now. Some of them are still on drugs, and God is still planning to use them tomorrow, or next year, or some years to come. And they are still on the street. So which means, God has plans for you, whether you are in sin, or you are in Christ. Therefore, listen to me, when you are in sin, the husband or wife you marry in sin determines that God's purpose for your life later in the future. They determine the sources of that purpose. You understand what I mean? Somebody got born that is not born again now, married, unbeliever, married, unbeliever. Before you know it, in that marriage you got born again. Something happened, you just met Christ, and you now began, you start following the purpose of God for your life. And before you know it, you see the trace of your calling. I'm telling you that brother or sister will be a terrible pain in the neck from, accompl from accomplishing your purpose. Because the devil will be used that brother or sister so much that you will wish you have never been born into this world. That is what the devil does. Even right there in sin, if you have a little bit of God, or you have been patient, or you do not engage yourself in the sin of fornication, that people that take advantage of fornication, even right there in the scene, you will not fall into that kind of thing. I have known many people that did not commit adultery or fornication when they were, I mean fornication when they were young. But when they got married, they, were, they, they, they were not born again. They were they're just decent people. They're just decent people, they don't mess around. And by the time they got married, 
the married rights, even as unbeliever, and they got born again later, and the partner was very right and fits the calling. But fornication, they expose you to punishment of everything you have done. For example, if you see any man that jump on any 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 person's daughter, when he had children too, people will they will maltreat his own children. That's the way it is. It's not a cause. It's it's a law of repercussion. It's not a cause. When you see a man, I have an uncle like that. When you see a man jumping around, people will jump around his own children. Amen. So we need to be very careful. We need to be very careful. And even if we are past this stage, we need to advise our children and everyone that come our way. I read on. Fornication makes people marry wrongly. Yes, I read it. Therefore, you will pray these following prayers with the spirit of enough is enough. And serious determination to be free. We have prayers to pray, but before then, I want to ask if anybody has questions. Any questions? If there is no question, I continue. I will save the prayer. It's 11 prayer points. I will keep it until we finish the adultery. So we pray the two together. Because the three go together. Fornication, masturbation, and adultery. Now, this is adultery. It is just the purpose of identifying it. And the reason why this study is being treated is because of the people that are still living in this sin in the world. We know that it's not in the body of Christ. And also for people that will be able to correct some mistake that this sin has caused them in the past, that is still disturbing the present, so that they will be able to see it, what was wrong, and rectify it in prayers. Amen. Amen. Now, this is the definition of adultery. Adultery is a voluntary act of sexual intercourse between a married man and woman with a partner other than their legal spouses. You understand that definition? A relationship between a man and woman different from their own spouses. Like you have your own spouse, your own husband or wife, and you have another friend. Apart from that, that's what we call adultery. They are the sin, sexual sin of the married people. And we'll see what used to cause it. And we'll see the carelessness that used to provoke it. And the way the devil too used to fuel it. We'll see all that in this study. Adultery. 